Okay, let's read the literary excerpt or the narrative in this case, Do Them No Harm. So I'm going to read the narratives and literary excerpts a little bit differently. They generally are organized chronologically. So, and as we see in this case, this presentation in the SHSAT breaks out each paragraph, you know, as just sentence by sentence, almost. Um, so I tend to read these a little more closely. And by the way, the beginning, the excerpt up top, this narrative is about the Nez Perce, an American Indian tribe in what is now northern Idaho. The tribe is preparing for a gathering before the coming winter. That is invaluable information. Always read those excerpts up front at the beginning of the passage. Great information about main ideas. So with that, let's begin the read. In the moon of Tayum, the hottest days of summer, when salmon spawn, the little streams and huckleberries ripen in the high mountains, people from many villages of the Chapunish nation gathered in the Oyet Prairie for the work and festivities of their annual Kamas harvest. From far and near, the people came. Should a stranger enter their homeland and ask, where are you from? The reply was always, we are in Namipo, the people who live here in this place. Okay, so what's going on here? Just to get an early good idea. Uh, we've got a tribe or several tribes who are coming together uh, while things are ripening and they're from many villages and they're working and they're festivities. So you get a sense of, you know, everything's kind of peaceful and, and going well and everybody's coming to socialize or meet together as they uh, maybe celebrate this harvest time, etc. It was a time of Lati Maton, a time of being friends together, when the people came for this last chance to enjoy being together before the cold moons kept them close to their fires. The visiting and trading, the foot racing and horse racing, the gambling stick games we remembered and talked long after they'd forgotten the drudgery, digging, roasting, commas, picking berries, drying meat. Lati Maton, it was good to be friends together. So again, we're extending this idea with more detail of friendship and coming together uh, to work, and it seems to be kind of... Maybe the fall period is before it gets cold. Five. As was their custom since Wakima, a time far back beyond the memory of man, they set up their camps in the same locations their parents and grandparents had occupied before them. So there's a sense of history here. Red Bear's people from Kamiya made their camp near the trail that came out of the mountains. There is Kamiya Valley. The people that Tatu had their camp close by across Wide Meadow. Pitts, the camp that Tatu, too. Nash, so all these examples of different camps. Um, in their own special areas in and around. So we're coming to be friends together. There's a long sense of tradition. Red Bear's people had traveled all summer with neighboring bands, gathering, preparing roots, picking, drying berries, drying, smoking meat for the winter food supply. Now they're at the Oyep camp. The women worked hard to dig and cure as many bags of roots as they could during the warm, sunny days. For the sharp night air brought about warnings that warm was going and cold was coming. So we get a sense of the change of seasons. You know, this won't last forever, this get together. Everyone helped in some way. So as we saw in the last paragraphs, everyone's working. It's not just festivity and play. It's functional. Everyone's working. Most of the men fished or hunted, while many of the women dug and roasted, other women picked other women and older children picked and dried berries, and the younger children played. They played at hunting. They played with the babies. They played with their horses and the puppies. They learned how to live through their play. So we've got a lot of repetition there. Play, play, play. This sun, happiness, peace, and quiet blessed the Red Bear camp. All were busy with their daily tasks until sudden cries came from the children playing by the trail. Okay, So up until now, we've got this peace and happiness. People coming, people coming, people coming on the trail from the high mountains. They called as they ran to their elders, who looked sharply at the figures approaching horsemen. Were they friends or enemies? Did they bring good news or bad? Who can it be? What brings them here? Were the questions on everyone's mind. So obviously you've got this peaceful environment and somebody comes in to break that, right? Well, possibly change it. So are they good or are they bad? Obviously they're concerned, will it break the peace? What brings them here? Could they be the four hunters who had gone to Buffalo County two summers past? Would they have news of the families who had gone long ago to Buffalo County and never returned? 
it was customary for a hunting party to be gone for more than one season. It looks like hunters, the older man agreed. Looks like they had good hunting. Maybe our four hunters gone by many moons. So it looks possibly that you know they know who the people coming are. They're the hunters. Excitement grew as the riders came close enough to be recognized. Aye, they are our four hunters. But transitioning or uh, contrasting transition. But who is the fifth person? They asked. Looks like a woman. Who is she? The hunters rode up to the welcoming crowd, proud to show off the loads of meat. So notice we get a sense of the hunters are very proud. They've done well. Hides and other trophies of their hunt. They paraded around the encampment for all to see how strong their hunting power had been. Note that's in caps again. So they have hunting power in capital letters. It's kind of interesting. What great hunters they themselves were. Redbeard's people rejoiced at their hunter's success. Good hunters brought good to everybody. The meat meant plenty of food, and the hides meant soft tan robes to give comfort through the cold moons. But was it was the sight of the frail figure of the woman who had aroused their curiosity. Who was she? Where had she come from? Again, she's a contrasting transition. So... Belongs to red pair people. Gone then, come back, the hunter said, as they dismounted and unloaded their packs. Now they could see she was the daughter of the family gone so long ago. The girl who had gone left back now, a grown woman. Watkuse. 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 Boy, that's hard to pronounce. Okay. The one cried, gone from home, then come back. So we're repeating this idea. Gone from home, then come back. Wakwesi, and Wakwesi was her name from that time on. Gentle arms lifted Wakwesi from her horse. The woman brought her food and made a place for her to rest. For many sons, they cared for her until she became stronger. One evening, Wakwesi told her story for all to hear. And that's the end. Okay. So like many excerpts, it kind of brings you into a scene and kind of just ends at a scene. We just develop it chronologically between. So what do we get out of this passage? Uh, <clears throat> again, the structure, how it's organized, being a narrative, being chronological. Um, we have a progression of ideas from the first page of how everything's peaceful. They're preparing for the summer, maybe fall harvest before it gets cold. Everybody comes together. Um, very importantly, everybody works in that process. But it's generally peaceful and blessed at, you know, bear camp and then all of a sudden the second page a new group comes in which upsets potentially the balance of this piece everybody's curious we can see by the question marks they're they're wondering what does this mean you know what what is coming good or bad and they find out it's the hunters from long ago including somebody who was uh, part of their tribe who had left and come back so all right we have a sense of the progression of ideas we have a sense of uh who's talking and how it's depicted. Um, the topic is obviously the different tribes and this season of getting together before the cold moods come. Okay, well with that, let's see what we can figure out about the questions. <laughs>